Hey guys, welcome back. This is our third installment of our Intro to Perspective. We're going to continue on where we left off. So if you haven't watched those first two videos, go back, check them out, and then come back and see us. All right, now, up until this point, we've been drawing in one-point perspective. And um, so just kind of recap, we've been uh, drawing like uh, a, a shape, like a rectangle here, and then we would draw we see like the other parts of this rectangle going back to our, our, our vanishing point, wherever we drew that. In this case, uh, your vanishing point, obviously, too, is, is determined by your relationship to this object. So the vanishing point right here, it's, it, they're changing. You guys, would you, you guys kind of understand that, right? So it's, like, it's changing here. So the vanishing point now, it's like, okay, back here somewhere, right? If I change it right here, the vanishing point, goes right there because those are these things are parallel in nature right this line and this line are parallel in nature this line and this line are parallel in nature but um, when we when we turn it this edge looks closer is looks larger than this one and they look like if they were to continue and to go on and on and on and on and on somewhere out over here we would have a vanishing point okay so what what <laughs> one of the things that we're going to look at now is because um, with one point perspective, we've been drawing this part just as a as a rectangle, and then we've we've gone off to our vanishing points from these angles right here. But um, there's something maybe that you're finding that might not look totally right right here, and you're finding you're starting to see that perspective has limitations, um, and so we're gonna see some of the limitations of one point perspective here really quick, and it's also gonna be uh, helpful to see why you're going to use a different type of perspective okay so let's do that right now okay so up until this point kind of like a box and then we put like a, a dot here this dot uh, is going to represent our vanishing point i just picked it arbitrarily this again it's telling you where you are in relationship to this object so if this is our object right here and your vanishing point here that's telling you that you are viewing this to the you're to the right of it and you're above it okay so let's go to that so this is your eye level again all right and we're just going to go to the edges the extremities of this object here and these lines just go straight back to our vanishing point okay now and again i said in one point perspective this line is always parallel with our our horizon line all right these lines they're always parallel with each other, they're parallel with our horizon line. All right, so when we put our, our, our line back here, the, the edge, the back edge of this, this uh, cuboid, I just had to say cuboid again, all right, it's going to be parallel with that as well, okay? So, and then perpendicular to, the, to your horizon line, it's going to come straight down, which is going to be parallel to this edge right here, come straight down. Okay, so... What you've probably noticed, so that's just basic one-point perspective, which we've already done. We've already gone over it a little bit. Um, but what you might be asking yourself is like, hey, if I'm above this, I get the idea that I can see, you know, this top part right here, and I get I'm to the I'm to the right of this object visually, so I can I can see this side. In fact, that's another kind of interesting point worth mentioning. What's cool about um, perspective is even though I'm on this side of the object, I'm like physically over here on this part of the board, it still feels like I'm over here. And that's one of the cool things I was trying to show with um, Leonardo, um, Leonardo's painting The Last Supper and kind of why you feel like you're situated where you are and how he's able to control that space. So anyway, that's a side note. But anyway, so it feels like we're right here. So remember our mantra from Leonardo. He said... Um, what was the first thing that he said? He said, things appear to get smaller as they get further away from us. So what's closer to us? This edge or this edge? Right? Obviously this edge. So shouldn't this edge appear larger to us than this one? Yes, it should. So why don't we do that? Well, in one point perspective, we just round things off. We're just, it's just, it's like so small. It's like kind of a decimal point. It's like kind of in math. You're just like, eh, I got to end it somewhere. That's where I'm going to end it. 
So it's not a very noticeable difference um, there. So you don't really notice the convergence. It might be happening, but you don't, it's so small that you just don't include it in your drawing. Okay, but what happens when you do start to notice those things? Well, like let's say you start to notice like, well, it's actually more like this. Um, or you, it'd probably be, it'd be a little bit different than that too. But you start to notice that these edges are gonna converge because this edge is bigger than that edge. Well, then you're starting to um, understand that why you're gonna need to use two-point perspective, which um, I'll show you right now. All right, so, all right, so in two-point perspective, you're gonna have um, two vanishing points. And so I just arbitrarily just put them there and there. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll use darker marker so maybe you guys can see this. I don't know if you guys can see. Does that show up better? Hopefully. All right. Wiggly lines. All right, so uh, from here, I'm gonna draw. So basically, you can imagine, this is our, our first drawing that we, these edges all went back to that uh, vanishing point. So that's this kind of shape, this cuboid in one point perspective. Well, let's just say, it. let's end this facet right there, okay? All right, so in one point perspective, this is what that, that object would look like. But if we were to really notice that this angle is angling up, it might look more like this. This is a little extreme, but just do it okay so all right sorry so basically we just drew the, this facet right here so we, we drew the other convergent um, the other facet that was converging out in space okay so from there this is a facet it goes that way and then we have this one from this side and it goes back in this space. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Right? Okay. Again, that should make sense. Like as, if you kind of look at things, things are gonna get um, smaller as they, as they go um, back in space. All right, now just, just FYI, if we were gonna be doing three-point perspective, this is why this would make sense here. And so three-point perspective would be involving a third vanishing point. Because like I said before with the two-point, the difference between one and two, um, you have, uh, you're saying, basically you're saying your eye level is up here. You are looking, you're, you're, this is the horizon up here, but what, it's also happening here is these angles are, are going to be going down, right? If you, if you look at an object, um, I don't know if I can force like enough perspective in here, um, but this, these angles are angling down just ever s slightly. Um, and if it were to continue to go on and on and on for a long time, it would get smaller. And so there's a there's a third vanishing point somewhere down here. And so if we were to follow these lines, they'll bend down to that perspective. Hopefully that makes sense. So now again, in two-point perspective, we don't do that. Um, we don't always include um, this third vanishing point because um, just like in one-point perspective, we round things off, all right? so. Again, most of the time it's just so small that you don't really um, include it. But if you were drawing like a larger building or something like that, hopefully, hopefully that shows up. Oh yeah, it's showing up. Okay, so there's there's a building and you can draw Spider-Man flying through the air right there or something. Okay, so um, hopefully that was helpful in understanding why you use one two or three point perspective. Just a couple more things before we wrap up linear perspective. Um, I think that you guys are starting to get a little bit of an understanding of like how and why it works. Um, 
which is, I think, the most important. And it's far more important to, to know like the principles of it and the application of it rather than, um, you know, just being able to, to do it, um, just to be able to maybe follow along and just plug things into a forced perspective. Um, what you want to be able to do is to take these principles, the things that we've learned here, and um, draw from observation with it. Okay, so perspective, as you're starting to understand, it has limitations. It has, um, you know, if you're trying to draw a two-point perspective, you know, and, you know, even like a room in two-point perspective, you know, sometimes the people, you know, you put your, your two vanishing points on here, and they're, you know, on that straight, you know, that horizon line, and then you put, let's see, you know, a line down here for this back corner here. We're drawing, right? You got a wall right here, so that's one. You know, you could draw this corner in one point perspective, right? That's what it would look like in one point perspective. But again, sorry, I just can't help but teach this, this stuff. So, but if it's in two point perspective, it goes up. So you could force perspective, like you could just make up a room like this and just just plug things in. I could put a, a bed in here. I could put some windows and walls and doors and whatever I wanted in here. Um, but the, the thing is that I want you guys to be able to do is to not just like pick random vanishing points because that's going to, that's going to determine the angles of everything. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a forced perspective. It's a system. Remember when I said perspective is a systematic, uh, way of determining things uh, as they recede in space. That's what we're talking about. This is a system. So you have to follow that system and it, it, otherwise it doesn't work. So, but what I would like you to do is look from, look from nature, you know, look from observation. And so when you are looking at, like, if you're going to draw like the interior of a room, you look, you know, hold your pencil up, use some of those sighting methods, look at those sighting angles, like what angle is that, you know, um, for example, you can see like, what's the angle of this board? It's not totally square to you, right? Like it should be, it'd be nice if I could make it square um, and video this, but um, it's not so. But look at, it's got an angle. So use your angles to help you determine those things. So when you are looking at a, a, a ceiling or whatever, say, oh, it's, it's angling that way, you know? And then you angle, like what's the floorboards look like? Okay, it's kind of angling that way. So you would see it, so again, th this wall's parallel, like, I don't know how tall your walls are, but it's, let's say it's eight feet or 10 feet. Well, where would it go? It goes back a long ways, which is, which is great. But what happens is oftentimes when you're drawing from observation, you will notice that this vanishing point is going to be off my whiteboard here, or it's going to be off your paper most of the time, which is problematic, which is why you don't always use it. <laughs> because it doesn't work. I mean, unless you're gonna start putting in your vanishing points into paintings and stuff, or like put a tack on the wall on your paintings, because uh, oftentimes you can't have your vanishing points in within the, the canvas or within your, your, your paper. They exceed beyond that. Um, and so then it makes it harder to use. And so they have limitations, but let's just continue on with this one just for a second. Uh, the, the point is, what I'm trying to make here is, you have to just trust your eyes. That's the most important thing. So you look here, and so you look at the next one. All right, so it looks like that angle or whatever. So you just kind of sketch that up, and you're like, what's the floorboard? It looks like it's coming in somewhere right in there, okay? And so then you can, where, where do those lines kind of meet? Okay, now let's just say you do this, and it's from observation, and you come up with those two lines. What happens sometimes, people will, it'll be crooked. It's this line isn't per, the, your horizon isn't perpendicular to this wall, right? So your horizon is kind of at an angle. You don't want that. So what would you do? Well, you, in this case, you would just like kind of average those out and say, okay, right there. And it just, it just change your angles. They're so slight that you would hardly even notice. So anyway, all of this is to say, you need to trust your eyes when you're doing this. And, um, I don't actually like to use um, in my drawings, my actual drawings and paintings that I do as an artist, I almost, I very rarely actually use vanishing points. 
Um, there are occasions when I do. Um, it's usually like a one point perspective um, where I might actually say this is where it is and I might loosely base everything else off of it. But I don't like to use it in a, in a very, in its most rigid form. Uh, one, because it's a, it's a system and it's, it's so, and it's all systems, it's a law. And if you violate that law just a slight bit, it is, it's glaring. It shows up really big. So unless you are absolutely perfect with your perspective, um, you shouldn't use it because it just magnifies um, errors. And which you probably saw in my drawings right there, like that I've done in these videos. Um, it's, it's very, it's ruthless. So, um, especially if you're using rulers and stuff and you're trying to make things square and you're trying to get like 90 degrees and you go like at 87 and a half degrees, things aren't lining up. They don't hit. It's much better. I feel to have a little bit of wiggle room when you're drawing. Plus it's more natural. And like I said before, you know, you don't have to deal with like vanishing points and putting like a tack on the wall over here or over here. So, just a kind of a word of caution with with perspective um, and using it that way, you know, or like when you have three point, your, your third vanishing point is going to be like down here. You're going to adjust every little thing that way. It makes drawing miserable. All right, it would just make it just so much not like just not fun to draw in, into such a rigid system. Um, but with that said, okay, now here's the takeaway. This is important, and that's why I share it with you. If I didn't think it was important to drawing. I would just like say, forget it. It's, it's not that important, but it is important. It's understanding the principles of it. And I do use the principles of, of linear perspective in, in my work all the time. And so, for example, um, you know, we'll, sometimes yeah, like in, in a beginning drawing class, we'll, we'll have like a box here. And I haven't seen you guys actually, you know, start your drawings because we're online here. But in my normal class, this is what I'll see like in the beginning of the quarter. I'll see like a box like this and um, I'm not kidding. It'll, it, you'll see like someone trying to draw a box and it'll, it'll look something like that. And you're like, okay, well, we know if it's like a cube or something, let's just say it. it's a cuboid. We'll avoid that perfection again. All right. We know that at least these, let's, let's, let's start off a little bit better. Okay. We know that these sides are all equal, right? So this side and this side, at the very least, they should be parallel. At the very least, that would be like isometric perspective. Like you'd see in like uh, math books or mechanical sort of drawings, uh, engineering type of stuff. Isometric perspective, you're at least gonna have those be parallel, right? This line and this line, they've gotta at least be, they've gotta at least be parallel, right? At the very least. We should know that isometric perspective. That's just we know that to be true about the object. So we should we should have things converging as they go further in space, not diverging, right? At the very least. So you know, isometric perspective at the very least. Then what we might start to notice is, hey, if I am on this, if I can see this side of the of this cube or this cuboid. That means I'm to the right of it, right? Obviously, I have to be, right? So if I, that means I have to be over here um, to be able to see the side. I'm obviously in front of this, the side. So I know I'm, I can see this and this. And what else? Well, I can obviously see I'm above it because I can see this top part. If I couldn't see the top part, I would be below it, okay? So at the very least, we know somewhere our view is somewhere up in there. And if we wanted to kind of look, we just take what, we've, we, what we know about perspective and we can kind of look to see those angles. Like, are they changing? Like, well, they look like they're the same, but maybe it is bending just a, a tiny bit as it goes that way. So that'd be cool. And then what if we say, well, you know what? I know my, my eye level is up here. So, you know, doesn't it make sense that I would have this move? Like we know like the angles become more severe, the more low they are. So. They're going to get flattened out by the uh, when they come up to eye level, but they get more and more severe as they come down. So this angle is probably going to change a little bit more. Okay, so let's just say just a little bit. We don't even know where it is. We're just kind of making stuff up. Yeah, but that's going to help out that that drawing. It already looks a little bit better, doesn't it? And then what if we just said, hey, well, because I know I'm above this, I might this angle might be. 
this might be larger than this one, even though it's so, so light and so, um, so just uh, minuscule. We might just notice it, just like it bends just a little bit that way. We know there's a probably vanishing point out there somewhere, so we can angle that one down just a little bit more. But that just helps us kind of, we just know certain things about these, these objects, right? And then we'd also can say, hey, I know my eye level, you're here, right? These things are gonna be angling down. So we'd probably have this just kind of angling, just, just a, a, a touch maybe, all right? And so I'm not saying that this is perfect, but I'm just saying like, it looked a lot better than, than this, right? Okay, so it's kind of using uh, what we know about perspective along with trusting our eyes. That's again, that's what I'm always a proponent of. Um, after you've trusted your eyes for a long time, you start to understand uh, perspective and you can, um, you can make things, uh, you can use your creativity a little bit more and not have to draw from observation as much as you, as you develop. But it's really important, and I, I think I really strongly suggest drawing from observation whenever you can. All right, so that's kind of the the take home from this uh, perspective. I might end up putting up a couple more videos on perspective, but we will see. Oh, but definitely we're doing um, linear perspective or atmospheric perspective next. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we might do some more um, linear perspective if I feel like torturing myself and you. All right. So stay tuned guys. Take care. Bye.